So the 49ers are finally getting the pieces put together just before the start of the regular season. One player ended his holdout today while another thankfully returned to practice. So I've got to talk about that, Stephon Diggs' comments about his former teams, Cam Hayward getting paid, and more right after... All right, first up, 49ers left tackle Trent Williams, one of the best to ever do it at that position, just agreed to a contract restructure. Yeah, it finally happened. Holdout is over. It's a three-year, $82.66 million deal with $48 million due at signing and $25.69 million via a signing bonus. So previously he was making a little over $23 million per year but now we'll be at $27.55 million per year, which officially makes him the third highest paid offensive tackle in the NFL, only behind Tristan Wirfs and Panay Sewell. He previously had three years and $77 million left on his old deal, so this new contract moves money up to the front of his contract and offsets some of the $2 million he accrued in fines for skipping out of training camp and preseason. It's well-deserved. Honestly, he's been one of, if not the best, left tackle in the game for a while now, and this is massive good news for 49ers fans. You can see the difference he's made for Brock Purdy, for example, when he's on the field versus off. In 582 dropbacks, Brock has 41 touchdowns and 11 picks with Williams on the field. Then in 91 dropbacks, uh, Purdy has three touchdowns and four picks with Williams off the field. 36% pressure rate with Williams on the field, 45% pressure rate with him off plus a much better EPA per drop back and a much higher QB rating. All in all, it's safe to say he is very important to the 49ers offense. Just a week ago, things were looking pretty uneasy out there in San Francisco. Ayuk's future was up in the air a little bit, though today, funny enough, Ayuk said he made things more difficult than they needed to be. Then Trent Williams was holding out. Christian McCaffrey wasn't practicing due to a calf injury uh, with his week one status even up in the air. Plus, Ricky Pearsall was shot on Saturday which I talked more in depth in yesterday's video. But fast forward to today, and most of those issues are now resolved. Brandon Ayuk signed that massive four-year deal. Trent Williams agreed to a contract adjustment. Christian McCaffrey was back at practice today for the first time in nearly a month with the calf issue. And then he's also expected to play Monday night. Then on top of all that, Ricky Pearsall was released from the hospital. He was placed for four weeks on the NFI list, but is already back at the 49ers facility. Tim Ryan, who is a radio analyst in San Francisco, said he saw Ricky in the weight room yesterday. This man is freaking insane. He was shot in the chest on Saturday afternoon, and just two days later, was not only out of the hospital, but back in the weight room. I would imagine it's minor light workouts, but still, he was back at it. So, all around, very encouraging news for Pearsall and his recovery, and great news for the 49ers all around. And going back to the new deals the Niners have gotten done, you may be asking to yourself, how the heck are they able to pay Ayuk, Trent Williams, Nick Bosa, Christian McCaffrey, uh, George Kittle? The, the list kind of goes on. You got Debo Samuel. There's a lot on there. Well, before today, they had a league-high $50 million in cap space because of a league-high rollover of unused cap from last year. And the reason for that is simple. Brock Purdy. He was Mr. Irrelevant in the 2022 draft, being the last pick. With that, he signed an extremely cheap contract and is making less than a million dollars this year season. That's how they're able to fill a roster out with premium talent and not be completely hamstrung. With that said, Brock Purdy is eligible for a contract extension at the end of the season, and the real question is, how much will Brock Purdy make and will the Niners be able to pay everybody once he inevitably signs a deal around market value? But that's a topic for another day. For now, the Niners are yet again legit contenders in the NFC. Now, someone else who got paid today was defensive end Cam Hayward. He agreed to a three-year $45 million deal that includes $29 million in new money with $16 million fully guaranteed. He was entering the final year of his last deal, but is now under contract through 2026. He did turn 35 last year, but he still has some left in the tank as he played all 17 games in both 2022 and 2021, recording 20 and a half sacks in those two seasons combined. He did battle through injury last year a bit, only appearing in 11 games and finishing with two sacks, but the 13-year vet is fully healthy and ready to roll for Pittsburgh in 2024. I am assuming he will retire at the end of that 2026 season, if not before. Uh, but no matter how these last few years play out, it's been one heck of a career for Cam Hayward. Sticking with the Steelers for a bit here, it looks like they're going to be without their starting guard, Isaac Sayumalo, for at least the first game of the season. He suffered a pec injury last week during practice, and while 
while he did dodge a bullet of any serious long-term injury, he's not playing this week against Atlanta. Mike Tomlin did sound optimistic about his status moving forward, though, saying, quote, we did get good news regarding his pec injury. We'll characterize him as week to week, and we'll see where next week leads us, but really optimistic about his return sooner rather than later. Now, a contender in the AFC is the Houston Texans. Their newly traded for receiver Stephon Diggs just appeared on the cover of GQ and did an interview with them, had a few spicy quotes on multiple subjects as well during that interview. Regarding the recent trade, as well as his trade from Minnesota to Buffalo, Diggs said, none of these teams wanted to get rid of me. Things had to shake because I kind of wanted them to shake. Well, true, kinda. I mean, nobody wants to trade a superstar receiver, but when they become a distraction in the locker room, then I mean, yeah, teams are gonna wanna trade him. So sure, I guess he gets some kind of credit for forcing their hand. That's a weird flex in my opinion. He then said, I don't know one star in any sport that doesn't want the ball. If you ain't getting the ball and it's not a problem, you ain't no competitor. Now, I do think there's a little truth to that, I guess, but it's not like Diggs was starved for targets for the last few years in Buffalo. He had 160 targets in 2023, the third most of his career, and has had over 100 receptions and 1,000 yards in each of his four seasons in Buffalo. I mean, maybe he wants 200 receptions and 2,000 yards per year. I don't know, but I'm very curious to see how things pan out in Houston considering Nico Collins is coming off a breakout year in which he caught 80 passes for 1,297 yards and eight touchdowns, and many consider him to still be the Texans' number one option, even with Diggs there now. I mean, that receiving room is absolutely stacked. I mean, more so than the rock on steroids. I don't think anyone is expecting him to put the same kind of numbers up he did in Buffalo, but he's definitely going to be a valuable target. He's also on a one year, and Diggs is definitely going to want to ball out as much as he can to get paid by somebody somewhere next season. Next up in some quick hitter player news, the Panthers released former first round edge rusher Kalevon Chason today. He was drafted 20th overall by the Jags in 2020, but never quite caught on, finishing his four years in Jacksonville with just 73 tackles and five sacks. The Jags let him walk after last season, and the Panthers brought him in for camp in the preseason, and now the 25-year-old former first round pick will be looking for a new team to call home. Then the Packers have more issues with their running back room. Their rookie running back Marshawn Lloyd didn't practice today and it looks like he too could miss their week one game against Philly. They have a short week of practice since they play in Brazil on Friday. So a DNP on Tuesday is basically like a player not practicing on a Thursday if their team played Sunday. The Packers already lost A.J. Dillon to season-ending IR after he re-injured a lingering neck injury, and it's likely going to be up to the second-year running back Emmanuel Wilson to step up as the number two back behind Josh Jacobs this week. All right, now, this is kind of wild, but the Chargers just named Scott Matlock as the team's starting fullback today. Now, why is that wild? Well, Matlock is a 6'4", 300-pound defensive tackle. He was a sixth-round pick last year and appeared in 15 games for them at defensive tackle, but apparently the big boy is changing his number from 99 to 44 and is listed at both fullback and defensive lineman for the Chargers' official week one game release. I have no idea how often he's actually going to see the field on offense, but man, I really hope we get to see this dude make some plays as a fullback this year. Please, just not against the Kansas City Chiefs. Anyway, with that, that's all for today, so I'll see y'all next time. Oh,